to say we're joined in the studio. We weren't sure how this is going to go from a ginger point of view, but uh, so far so good. Paul McShane, good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome to the studio. Thanks very much. The uh, ginger thing we were sort of considering might be a bit of an internet uh, overload. It's never been tried before yeah. anywhere anywhere on the internet. Apparently 15% so. of the world's gingers are in the studio right now. <laughs> it's the official stat I'm hearing. Yeah, we're a dying breed anyway. <laughs> we are, yeah. I, look, I, I reason, don't ask me why, to Google this last week, how many gingers live in the world. Um, <laughs> somebody, had, uh, somebody had said to me that there was... They kind of figured, it was actually in this studio, uh, we were discussing it last week. Um, somebody said they, they figured there might only be a couple of million, but I mean, I think there's half a million in Ireland alone. So, I mean, it suggests that the, the numbers are good, you know? Yeah. But it's unique. I'm happy with it. It is. <laughs> That's a bullshit um, statistic, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thanks a million for coming into us. Um, your end of season, obviously, and um, we'll talk to you a little bit about Reading because it's been an interesting couple of years for you, I think. Um, talk to you a little bit about that and maybe a bit of Ireland as well. But you're here. Um, you're going to be playing golf out in Druid's Glen on, on Sunday, the Sean McShane Golf Memorial Day. Yeah, yeah, we have it every year. It's uh, in memory of uh, my dad, who passed away eight years ago now. So uh, we just have... Um, yeah, a golf team going on in uh, Druid's Glen, mm. and it's uh, through Newtown GAA, and um, whatever we make goes to the Autism Centre uh, in Newtown, and um, yeah, it's good. It's good, a good day out, and uh, a lot of people turn up for it, uh, local teams and try and get lads, a few of the lads to play, a few of the football lads, so killers playing, mm. yourself playing. Mm. So um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good day, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. Your dad was a hurler? Yeah, he was, yeah. R Rahini and Wicklow don't uh, naturally sort of slip off the tongue as you know, <laughs> hurling strongholds necessarily. Yeah, he played, he played for Rahini and he, he, played, he played a bit for Dublin as well. Um, yeah, so he was... It's, I'm in a, in a Gaelic family here. That's him there at the back left, I think. That's him, yeah, ba yeah, back left, yeah, heading him. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, yeah, he was big into the G GAA and uh, I was as well. I yeah. think I think he probably would have preferred me to go into into the Gaelic. Would he? Yeah. Yeah. I think actually when I when I um I always wanted to play for Joey's when I was younger, mm. and I got um I got scouted playing for Newtown at the time, and the the the, the coach came up to me mum and dad after the game and said, "Does he want a trial for Joey's?" And my dad said, "No, he's right. too busy. He's too busy playing Gaelic for Newtown and Wicklow. <laughs> oh, he has wow. no time for that." But then my mum realised that. It was my dream to my dream to play for Joey's. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so then, yeah. So went to yeah. yeah, yeah. What position did he play? Was he was? I think he was a. I think he was a midfielder. Right. I don't know. Or a, or a, even a, even a forward. Right. Yeah, and his, his forward. brother. That was his brother was in the shot there as well. Yeah, his brother. Yeah, the Mitchell brothers going around. <laughs> they were. In Rainy, yeah. There's a few good few stories. I used to love. I used to love when he uh, when he told the stories of him and his brother. Yeah, there's some interesting stories. Were they, and then they were the, hardcore, were they? The Mitchell yeah, I brothers? Yeah, I think they were, yeah. Um, the Rohini lads as well. The Rohini, um, the Gaelic lads come and play in the golf as well. And, um, you know, they're, they're good crack and they, they tell a few stories mm. when, they're, when they're there. So it's, it's always, always interesting stories. And he, he did, he dabbled in a bit of coaching, did he? Is that right? Did I read that? He was, when he went to Wicklow, that he was trying to spread yeah. the, go the hurling gospel in Wicklow? Yeah, he did. He, he, um, he took over uh, Newtown. He introduced hurling to, to Newtown. And um, yeah, there were some interesting hurling matches up in uh, Wicklow. It was, it's a bit it was, of a magic war. spot at the best times. War, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, yeah, he loved the coaching, and he coached. He coached uh, my Gaelic team growing up, right from under tens to under sixteens, and then I had to stop the Gaelic. I remember I had to stop. But we played. I think we played Killians in a in a match while I was playing in a school match, and I'd signed for United at the time. And I think I was a marked man then in Gaelic matches, and uh, I got the head punched off me <laughs> from, really? from the back of my head, right. yeah, from behind. So I thought that was that was the day I thought uh, Gaelic has to stop. <laughs> that will do. That was your last game. That was my last game. Wow. I think, yeah, yeah. What sort of a coach was he? Well, he was, he was a uh, vocal. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, he'd always have. Um, he'd always tell the lads to do ten sit ups and ten press ups before you go to bed, and when you wake up. And then there was a test in train. Everyone had to lie down on their back, and he'd he'd step across everybody to right. make sure that they were doing their sit ups. <laughs> so he was, yeah, he was, he was good. It was good fun, and um, yeah, I think every, every, everyone loved him as a coach. And um, yeah, he got the he got the best out of people. Yeah, good. Well, listen, best of luck with the golf day. Obviously, on Sunday, we hope everything goes well. Hoping for a nice day as well, and uh, hopefully, yeah. I'll beat Kilban in the uh, yeah. in the golf is the main <laughs> my main objective anyway. Yeah. Um, it's been a 
as mentioned, a sort of unusual maybe couple of years for you. You're three years now at Reading? Three years, yeah. Three years. Going into Settled almost as you've been, is it, of your course of your career? Yeah, probably, actually, yeah. Yeah, um, well, probably, yeah, Hull. I was a Hull for like six and a half years, but it was, it was a big roller coaster. I was on a Hull. Mm. Um, you know, we, I went there first on loan, and it was great. We were, you know, we, we were top of the league. <laughs> well, top top six uh, until uh, Christmas. And then I got called back uh, to Sunderland. And then the, the following season, then I signed for Hull. And then we got relegated at the end of that year. And then a new manager came in and just wanted, just wanted everyone gone. And um, personally, I wanted to try and get back up with Hull because I felt as if I owed it, to, owed it to the fans. And I was desperate to stay, but I don't think the, the, the manager wanted me to stay. Who was the, the manager uh, then? Nigel Pearson. Right. So then, um, yeah, it was a bit of a turbulent season. That year we came down, I was sort of in and out. and. It was frustrating because I, f- I was feeling good and I wanted to play, and then um, then I had to go out on loan. I had a big bust up at night with Nigel. Uh, had you, yeah, yeah sort of just come to a head at one point. But I, then I went on loan towards the end of the season. I went to Barnsley, which was good. I played 15 games, and it was a, sort of a quick fix at the time. But I really enjoyed my time there, and you know, got playing games again. Then the following season, it was all looking rosy in, in pre-season and stuff, but. Um, looked like I was going to be starting the first game, and then I got injured. Had a really bad calf injury, um, and then it was just yeah. Then Nigel Pearson left. Nicky Barnby took over, and I ended up going out on loan to Crystal Palace. And then the next season, Steve Bruce came in, and that's when that's when I sort of settled in Hull, but settled and but not comfortable. You know, mm. well, I don't think you should ever be comfortable in football, but it was the most sort of. It was the time where I was like, right, you now this this is it sort of thing. And you'd been <laughs> sort of 27, 28 maybe? That's what oh, yeah, you was, yeah, I was 20, yeah, about that, 27, 28. And then we ended up getting promoted uh, that season back to the Premier League, which was, you know, which was great, which mm-hmm. was brilliant. And then um, you yeah, had a couple of years then the Premier League with, with Hull sort of in and out. And then towards the end was actually you played the, the last 15 to 20 games in the Premier League with Steve Bruce. And then, um, then my contract came to an end and that was the end of my... Remember that whole era. Yeah. With Pearson, you go in and you go, listen, here I want to play, and he says, you're not playing. Is that the, I mean, I don't want to overly simplify this, what's the, how does that work? Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, um, I felt as if I should have been playing. Well, I always feel as if I should be playing, you know, but I felt good, and every time I played, I'd play well, but um, he just had it in his head, he just wanted a, a, a fresh start, he wanted his, his own players in, which is, you know, as a manager, probably understandable, but... I was desperate to play, and you know, I was willing to do anything to play, and um, yeah, so it was a bit of a clash. Mm. So yeah, but I, like I get on with Nigel now, and you know, but um, yeah, at the time it was you know a lot, a lot going on. Mm. It's good to hear you get on well with him now, but I dare say you weren't the only person who's had a, their falling out with Nigel Pearson during that era. Yeah, well, I think it was sort of later later on in in his in his managerial career that I think he had a few fallings out, but. Yeah, I had one very early, <laughs> but it was it wasn't as if I don't know. It was just a clash where, I, if, you know, when I'm not playing, I'm, you know, I, I can be. I don't know. I don't know. I just I'm just desperate to play mm-hmm. every, everywhere I go, and I want to play as many games as I can. And and at the time, I felt as if I I felt good, and um, I just felt every time I I was given the chance and I did well, I was, it was sort of taken back off me, and I was in 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 that point in my career where I was 25, 26 and supposed to be sort of your peak sort of thing so I was desperate to get going. Absolutely and I, you say there that you should never be comfortable in football but I dare say you could have done with a little bit more comfort in that whole situation where maybe things, maybe off the pitch, maybe in terms of your league position could have been just a little bit more stable and that you could have been focusing on your football a little bit rather than crap who's going to be the next manager, will I actually survive this football club? Yeah, yeah it was, um, yeah there was a lot going on a whole at the time. But um, yeah, it's just just the way football is, you know. It's just thing, things can change really quickly, and that was always in the back of my mind that I knew that it wasn't, you know, it was a very turbulent time for me. But I always had in the back of my mind that football changes so quick, so I, um, you know, just kept going. Just sort of, I think in in football you got to stay in the fight for as long as you can, and and I stayed in the fight um, at Hull, 
and I eventually turned it around. So it was, you know, it was it was a big learning experience for me. And um, you know, looking back, it was, you know, it was actually wouldn't change it because it ended up being because the whole fans realised the sort of the the roller coaster I, I had been on a whole and and then when I turned it around, the, the you know the fans really took to me and um, you know it was it was a great experience a whole. You're sort of well used to, uh, like you'd set your stall out very early in your career in terms of knocking on managers' doors and going, here, listen, I want to be in the team, like you did it with Fergie. Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. What's the... Yeah. We want, we want to hear about this. What was the... What happens there? No, it was... Um, so, it was... Yeah, so I went over at United when I was 16 and... Um, there was a couple of clubs interested. Is there? Yeah, it was. It was, it was. I went on loan to Brighton when I was nineteen twenty, and I ended up getting Player of the Year, and I played over forty games, and I felt as if I, you know, I was, you know, I was going back to United, and I, I wanted a mm. chance, just just to train with the first team and mm. stuff, and um, and I knew in the back of my mind that I looked at previous players at United um, in the reserves and they'd gone out on loan and then they'd come back mm. and then they'd stayed in the reserves for like a year and they'd just gone stale and they just sort of took right. a backward step. Where in my head was that I'm going out on loan and I'm going to keep going. I don't want to take a step or back and go back to the reserves because I think that's, it's, it's sort of soul destroying that is when you get to taste of first team football then you go back to the reserves, you know, it's it's no good. So. That was in my mind, and I came back into pre-season and um, trained with the first team for a, for a couple of days, and then there was a group of us put back to to the reserves, and you know that was a big no-no for me. So I I sort of nipped it in the bud early. Knock on the door. Knock on the door, yeah, and said, listen, um, you know, what's the what's the story here, and I just need to know. Are you packing yourself when you're getting ready to do that? Well, to be honest, when I was actually with. Uh, when I when I go in, if I'm going in to see someone, if I'm going in to see a manager when I was younger anyway, I'd actually, the night before, I'd sit there with a pen and paper and, and think about what I'm going to say. Right. Because before I've done it when I was like younger, say, just with a coach, I'd, I'd sort of sit there and because I was young, I'd sort of freeze a little bit and I'd um, I'd forget what, I'd, what I was going to mm -hmm. say. But then going in to see uh, uh, Ferguson, I, I'd prepared myself and, right. and I sort of said to myself, you're gonna sit in that seat until you have every, until you finish what you're gonna right. say. So I, yeah, I was prepared going in and um, just asked the questions. And to be fair, at the time there was a you know Man United were a big power at the time, and yeah. and around my age group as well there was like Johnny Evans, Jared PK, mm. and Ryan Shawcross, who have done all right for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I was. I just, was I just went in to see what the crack was. What were the questions you were asking him? Like what was the just about what the future am I going on the preseason tour and stuff? Yeah. And he, he didn't know, and I was I was like, well, that says it all, really. So I just I have to right. I have to have to move, I have to go because I had a year left on my contract, but I, I had to nip it in the bud early. He was he, he said you know you're, I think you're making a hasty decision, but I said I've been thinking about it for a long time to be honest. Yeah. So I just want to crack on my career now. And he wasn't giving you any hope of listen, stick with us for a little bit, and because I mean you mentioned some of the players that were there. Obviously, it was a pretty yeah. fruitful time for them defensively, and I'm sure you're saying, listen, I'm I'm as good as this guy. I'm sure, but uh, you yeah, know. yeah, because you, yeah, you do. You've got. I think you've got to back yourself. Yeah, but um, yeah, it was just I just wanted to crack on. Yeah. He just he was sort of saying, you know, as he said, you, I think you're making a hasty decision or whatever, but. I just I had in my mind that I didn't want to end up sort of on the scrap heap in the reserves and yeah. um I was desperate then to make it to make a career for myself and just to just to get playing senior football. Because there is that story and it's completely fictitious that Fergie tells about you challenging PK to a race. Yeah, yeah, that's that's gone around that yeah, that that's I think Tom Heaton started that, I think. <laughs> he was my he was in my digs at the at the time and and I don't know where that started from. It was like the so Fergie himself sort of. I don't know. It was no, I don't. I don't think. Well, I don't think it was Fergie, but it was. Uh, yeah, we sort of con um, compared. You know, he was. I think. I think Fergie might have said that. You know, PK. He's a. Uh, his. I don't know. His. his I know because I think you was saying about me that because initially it was my height wasn't I, I wasn't uh, big enough to to be a centre back, but then I went on loan to the Championship and. Uh, height wasn't a problem, mm. and then it was like uh, half a yard of pace, um, and then 
he, he compared PK, and I think I basically said, well, he's he's not the quickest, you know what I mean? And then it just developed from there, and right. then it was all of a sudden, then I offered PK out a race in the car park, <laughs> and that, yeah, that's totally, yeah. Yeah, fabric. You were going yeah. out to mark up the pitch and. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, right, you ready? <laughs> no, Would you have taken him? I might have done, actually. Yeah, got my arm across. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that well, actually yard. That's part of the game, that's <laughs> yeah. fair enough. It's that 100 metre sprint, that's all right. Yeah, but yeah, that was, yeah, that just. That just developed over the years. Yeah, it's weird because when you look back at the stuff Alex Ferguson has said about you, it's all been really complimentary comparing you to Roy Keane at the start. So why did that, not that relationship, but that kind of view of you change? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't think the relationship broke down. It was just that I was, I was too eager to to get going. I think, and um, I wasn't going to risk hanging around in the reserves to to the risk of going backwards, and um, whatever he had, he probably had in his head. He probably seen, he probably seen the likes of uh, Johnny Evans and and PK and maybe Ryan Shawcross and thought, you know, maybe the best thing is is to, is to go. But we had a, we had a com we had a good conversation. It was yeah. good. It was a good conversation, and um, there was no you know there was no, there was nothing major. It was just mm. it was probably you know we were probably thinking you know who's this fella coming yeah. and asking loads of questions. Yeah. But I just needed to 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 get it straight in my head what was going on. Mm. And um, in some ways, it must like it strikes me that he must be on some level impressed by that too. That you weren't. Like actually, you would have been the sort of player he should have been trying to keep on that basis because you weren't afraid to come into him and go, "Listen, I want to do the best for my career. An ambitious player, hungry player who wants to play football. Like that's the sort of player he wants to have involved. Almost, you know. Like you're not the guy that's sitting in the trench room, like internally being eaten up by this thing. You're actually all right to come in and sit down and go, like I've been captain, I think, for the reserves, and I've gone out and had a successful loan spell, and I want to further my career now. Yeah, I think it was. It was um, for me. It was. A, I think it was a little bit of a frustration that. Like I had, like the first year there, <coughs> I uh, won the U Cup and then captained the Mill Cup team, uh, winning Mill Cup team, and I thought that was you know the whole Beckham era gigs and all that was what they did U Cup Mill Cup, mm. and in my mind I'm thinking right I want a bit of a shot here and um, went on pre season with, with with the team and then then was back in the reserves I was 18. And then I did well the reserves, and I just wanted that crack, you know. I just wanted that crack of, you know, getting a cup game or something. And it just, it, it didn't come. And remember, like I used to go away with the Ireland under 19s and that. And then when I'd come back, because I'd missed, because in the under 19s in Ireland, it was like the the games were still in season, so you'd miss a few games. Like say there was a cup game, I think I missed a cup game. And then I'd, I'd, I'd come back and they're like, well, you would have played that cup game if you weren't away with the under-19s Ireland. And it was just all that sort of stuff that right. got me frustrated because I'm thinking, well, was it? Or yeah. well, They could so, have also said that to you, couldn't they? Like, if you stay here, you're going to yeah, do this thing. It's that's what I mean. It was just all, it was just a bit of a build-up of, of frustration that mm. I thought maybe I should have got a, a game in the cup or something. And, um, and then when I, when I went out on loan and played 40 games and... and, and End up getting Player of the Year for a lone player. I thought, you know, now now was my chance. And then the first sniff that I got that that they weren't having me, I was just like, right, that's it. I gotta go. I gotta like, I gotta take the because that's what the some lads, some lads that I seen were holding on to the Man United tag, and I wasn't at the time. I was like, I'm. It doesn't bother me now. Mm -hmm. I just want to just make a career for myself and. And um, yeah, crack on. Was there ever the thought of uh, more loan spells, like even just kind of comparing yourself to John O'Shea a little bit, or did you feel comparing yourself to John O'Shea was kind of like I'm Irish and I play for Manchester United? His situation might have been completely different to mine. Yeah, I think yeah. There's all everyone's in a different situation, and um, I was I just had in my head that I was 20. Like that's the thing when I was younger. I was like, like uh, when I was when I was younger, like when I was 20. I I used to think I was old. I used mm. to have in this thing. I'm getting old. I'm getting, you know, my career sort of passing me by here. So I wanted to to just get going straight away. So I wasn't I wasn't really comparing myself to anybody because everybody has you know different journeys, different situations in the game. And um, so yeah, John I think went went on loan to Antwerp and um, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure where else. Bournemouth was it Bournemouth? Was it yeah, yeah. So I I'd, I'd been on loan to Walsall as well when I was 18. I uh, played four or five games, there was only a month loan. And so then I came back, I actually came back injured. And then 
then the following season I went on loan to Brighton, so I thought yeah. that I thought that that was me, like and um, it, yeah. Like you mentioned there, it's very interesting that you say that some people got obsessed with the tag of being a Manchester United fan. Would I be right in saying that you almost had an obsession of the tag of not being a teenager anymore? Yeah, um, it was just the fact that like I seen, I actually I I seen it happen in front of my own eyes where lads came back on loan and they went back to the reserves and it was just. It's like, what are you doing? And then they were going backwards, and I just didn't want. I just didn't want that to happen to me. I didn't want that to, to risk, me not making a career in the game. So I, I just the minute I, the minute I got the sniff that I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't being fancied. I, I was gone. Mm. I mean, I, I wanted to do it early as well because it was like the start of pre-season, and I wasn't, I wasn't going on the pre-season tour. That was sort of clear in the, in the meeting I had with uh, Ferguson, and I was like. Right, I can't hang around here now and and play in the reserves. Like, like you said, you were too eager there as well, which is another very interesting term to use. And like, what was that prevalent around the rest of your, of your career? Because they always say you can never try too hard. I, I've never heard somebody say that they were too eager or had too much of a work ethic. Yeah, I think I was. I think you. I think you can. I think you can overdo it. I think you can be too eager, and I think you can. I know people sort of say, he, you know, I've heard, you know, he doesn't want it and he doesn't want it enough. And I, I've said that about people myself, but I think he can over want it. I think he can definitely over want it and um, you can overdo things. And I think I was, that was, you know, probably, probably one of my biggest downfalls where I would over want it. I'd be, over, I'd be too eager. So as I've grown up, as I've got older, I've eased off a little bit and become a little bit little bit wiser. What, what are you doing that that like when you over want it, like what are the things that you were doing that manifests itself? Like thinking too much, I think thinking about games, like being too passionate in games and probably training too hard, overly training. Like one summer I I trained one summer I trained twice a day, every day and had weekends off. I didn't have a holiday, I was like from Monday to Friday, I was I was going to the gym twice a day, and then like you know felt good, felt as if I was doing the right thing. First week back in pre-season, tore my cartilage, you know. So that that sort of eagerness to to do well and um, to to work hard, yeah, it's all well and good, but I think there's a there's a definitely a balance that you need to find. How would that 19 or 20 year old Paul McShane reflect on that decision now at 32 and reflect on the career that you've had since? Um, at the time, I, I still think it was the right decision. I do. I, I, I really do. Was it got me going early, and um, and you know, if I if I hung around in the reserves, God knows what would have happened. Mm. So I I sort of struck while the iron was hot. As in, I came off the back of forty odd games um, in the championship, um, player of the year. So I knew that I had a chance of getting mm. a good club. And then West Brom came in, and they just come down from the from the Premier League. So. Um, I think at the time it was it was all right. I don't look back and I don't I don't regret it. I don't regret it that much. It's just it was it was just something that I needed to do. And if you were saying you know you had that sense of urgency at nineteen twenty in terms of geez I'm getting old here. At thirty two, what do you what are you thinking? I mean you're just you you made a back thing for the last game this season from injury and, and yeah. been out for a couple of months. So yeah, I had you. Yeah. Um, yeah so what are you thinking now about the, like the urgency of your career almost at this stage? Is it? I'm sort of. I'm easy. I'm sort of easy now. I know, like I'm, I'm 32, and in in terms of a football, it's old, but I feel good. And you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let age be me cage sort of thing. I'm just gonna keep going for, for as long as I can. And um, I think I'm in sort of a, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not as mad as I was when I was 19, 20, but um, just become a little bit more wiser and. Uh, I'm just gonna go with the flow, see what happens, see what, see what comes. But I, as I said before, I know that football is um, is the survival of the fittest, and you got to stay in the in the fight as long as you can. And um, hopefully, you've got some some great years ahead of me. Fair to say that not not this season, just gone, but the previous season might have been one of your better of of your entire career, almost under Yapstam and the type of football that was been played at that time. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was really. Yeah, it was brilliant. It really was. Yeah, Yap was a. You know, he's. Fantastic when he came in and um, brilliant coach, really brilliant. And the way he had us playing, it was like we were playing like Man City, like played in the all, previous all season, all on the deck, all and, on the yeah. deck, and and play play no matter what. And like I've been, like I was at 
uh, Man United's academy and was all playing out from the back and stuff and you'd always, as a centre back, you'd always drop off to try and get the ball but you know if the strikers came to you it was like okay right push up the pitch but mm. Yap had like all movements going on and it was a real eye opener so it was, it was, it was a fantastic learning curve and as a centre back because he was a centre back as well some of his tips were you know brilliant and um, learnt a lot of them but like as playing centre back in his teams it was like I think in a, in a game centre backs might cover nine and a half K in, in some games playing for Yap I was covering eleven and a half oh. because he, he'd rely on the, the goalkeeper in the back four to build up the play and you were making angles all over the place so you were sprinting to make an angle for the goalkeeper and if the goalkeeper kicked it which <laughs> mostly he did he'd be sprinting up and sprinting back just making angles everywhere and um, it was a joy to play in, and it was, as I said, it was a, it was a, it was a big learning curve. And Stephen Reid was there as a coach, was he that that same yeah, year? Yeah, Reid was there. Yeah, yeah, Reid was there, and he was, he, he came when I, he came under Steve Clark, and Steve Clark brought me in. So, um, yeah, so Reid was, Reedy was very good. Took a lot of the sessions, and yeah, he's a, he's a good young coach. I was talking to uh, Keith Andrews about you because he watches a good bit of championship football and he was saying that you were like Beckenbauer coming up with the ball <laughs> at the back uh, and he said I could quote, you, I quote him on that as well. Yeah. Um, but like it seems like you you found a manager or a style that was that very much suited your game. Like it must be hugely frustrating. Like Owen mentioned earlier on about the chopping and changing at a club like Hull. So you're totally at the whim of whatever manager comes in and whatever sort of style they want to play unless you end up following up Sam <laughs> everywhere he goes. It's That's tough. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah. The thing was, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing. It was like all the the way Yap played and the way he wanted us to play. It, yeah, it, it did suit me. But I think I don't know. I think you know what I mean. Pe Some people think I can't kick a ball, you know, because like I'm all this aggression and I, I, you know, I'm passionate and I, you know, I might might do a rash tackle here or there. But you sort of get pigeonholed in that way, where it's like he, he can't, you know, he can hardly pass a ball, he can hardly kick a ball, but. Like I grew up in the Man United Academy, sort of wanting to play out. They encouraged playing out, so that sort of short passing sort of did did suit me. And um, with Yap, it sort of you know I just really enjoyed it mm -hmm. and the way he was playing. And it was just as I said, it was an eye opener, and it was everyone bought into it straight away. And you know I certainly did, and it was a joy to play in because when you were playing against teams, playing the way we were playing, passing, keeping the ball, you could hear the frustration in the opposition. Mm. And I think we caught a few teams off guard as well because the previous season, like we ended the season really poorly, so I think people thought we were, you know, going to be crap this mm -hmm. season. But um, you know, we we surprised a few people. We ended up coming third, and you know, unfortunately, getting getting beaten in the playoff final. Why Why do you think people would have said that you can't kick a football? Well, I don't know. Well, you know, obviously, in games, mistakes. You know, you make mistakes, and as a young defender, I, you know, I made my fair share of mistakes, and um, this is my style of play, maybe, and in, in my aggression and stuff. And you just sort of, I think you get pigeonholed a little bit if you if you're if you're aggre aggressive and and you know willing to get stuck in. I think you get you get pigeonholed in, in that sort of sense, and maybe it takes takes it away, takes people's minds away from the actual the the game and the. Just the whole, yeah, the whole game of, it, of football. Because it seems almost ironic that if you're playing, an, if you're a ball playing defender playing good football like you have been at Reading, that and you're Irish, that that would be the the hole that you're pigeonholed into. Like it seems the almost the opposite of it. That if somebody can play some bit of ball, they're hailed as the next Lionel Messi almost if they're Irish. So it it, it seems strange, doesn't it? That that's the contradiction there. That they say you can't kick a ball despite the fact that you're a ball playing defender. You know. Yeah, that's but it's just uh, football. Like that's that's football in general. It's I think it's you know ninety five percent perception out there. It's it's not people actually miss miss things. You know, it's uh, you know people might get influenced what people say or you know yeah you see, yeah you're Irish and um, you know you're not you're not from Europe. You're not from the continent. You're not cultured. It's all yeah. It's all just perception, and that's I think that's. Um, Life in general, really. Do you think that perception extends to the Irish management team at the minute? Um, as in, I couldn't believe when I looked up to see that it was one, is it one cap in five years? Yeah, is that right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, two, two. I played. It's the England game. I came on against England, and then I played against Slovenia there okay. a couple of years ago. Okay. 
What's, so. why, I, I honestly, I couldn't, because you've been involved in a lot of squads and I was really surprised to see there were so few caps over that time. Why do you think that is? Hey, I don't know. I think when I know when, when Martin and Roy first took over, I, I had a an ankle injury, um, a hull. I was out for, for three months and I knew, like when I, when I first got injured, Martin and Roy rang me and were saying, you know, I'm oh, sorry to hear about your injury and was, you know, come, um, you know, Get well soon or whatever, and uh, yeah, I was chatting to them, and then then I sort of got back fit, but then I think they sort of they'd had their players that they were dealing with, and uh, I think there was a squad in that summer because I came back and played the just caught the end of the FA Cup final, so then I was I was back fit, and then there was a squad in the summer which which I wasn't in, so I thought yeah you know okay I was out injured for a while so I understand them, but then I wasn't in the next squad and. Um, yeah, it's just the way it sort of worked out that, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like there's the, yeah. been a lot of players coming in, players we're not sure about, like Derek Williams in the last quarter, like, he may end up being a fantastic player, but a lot of players that we're not sure about, whereas like they know what you're about. Like it's, It just seems like an unusual one to me that they wouldn't, um, and it doesn't sound like they're overly communicating either in terms of the rationale behind it. Um, well, no I've, not, no, I've not spoke to them, no, I've not spoke to them uh, recently, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's just their their decision. They 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 decide on on the players that they're gonna bring in, and yeah, it's. Um, Is that frustrating you know, to you when you see when you see some of these guys coming in that are like frequently not playing at, at your level or as frequently or as well? In the past, I've I've sort of thought about that. Yeah, but I'm just I'm just going with it now. It's like you know I'm 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 here if 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 they want to pick me, and if not, you know that's that's their decision. But they they've got a lot of players that they've dealt with over the years, and. Maybe they've they've taken a liking to some players and um, yeah, I'm just I'm just I'm just going with it now and uh, yeah, you know, I'm never going to sort of reel myself out of of being called up for for Ireland. Or I'm never not going to I don't think I'm going to come out and retire or anything like that. You know, I'm 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 here for as long as that I feel as if I can can play and yeah. So it's it's um, you know mm. balls in their court really. Yeah, because like even with Roy's. A guy that you, I'm sure you must know him pretty well. Like the your careers have sort of, there's been a fair bit of symmetry there over the last while. Um, I mean, I don't know that anybody is really on those sort of terms with Roy that you can pick up pick up the phone and go, oh, hey, uh, remember me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still exist. But is that a, is that an avenue or what's the what's that um, relationship like? Is it? Well, I well I done it like when um, a few years ago. I I, I did it when um, they sort of first took over because. Um, yeah, I rang Roy just to see what, mm. what the story was, and you know what I mean, just to, you know, to say that I'm, you know, still alive, sort of thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, like you know, I, I know Roy now for a good few years, and um, I could, I could pick up the phone or whatever, but it's, you know, what's it gonna do now? It's sort of like, like, um, yeah, I'm here if you fancy it, and mm. if not, okay, you know. But I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, keep doing what I'm, you know. Been doing the last few years and keep my head down, training, um, you know, playing as well as I can play, and and um, yeah, if they if if I get the call up, brilliant, and if not, well, that, that's life. Yeah, um, it strikes me that the twenty-year-old Paul McShane would have been. Uh, I mean, you've spoken yeah. about the maturity that's <laughs> coming into your into your life, both on and off the field. Would have been barreling the door down, going here, listen. Yeah, happened? probably. I think it's the, like when you when you sort of like even now. I know I've been now injured for for a good few months and. Um, whether that was the reason I'm not in this squad, I don't know. You, you'll never know. But you know, when you when you see when when I'm especially when I'm back in the country, when I, when I'm hearing on the radio the you know the lads doing interviews and you know the updates of the team, it just sort of hits you deep in, inside your stomach where you're thinking, I'd love to, I'd love to be there and um, you know still have this or you know the passion to to want to be involved and um, yeah. So you know, hopefully that passion keeps going for for a long time and. Yeah, and God knows what will happen. Yeah, you'd spoken about um, a bit earlier on, just as we wrap up, the idea sort of when you were young about wanting to stay in the fight was a, an expression that jumped out at me there. And it seems as if from chatting to you that, uh, I mean, you see been good Nick, you're obviously back from the injury, you're 32, very settled at Reading, that um, that door certainly isn't closed. And that maybe in some respects, under the right manager, that uh, some of your best football still to come, maybe. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Um yeah, I see. I see how I feel in pre-season this year. That'll be. Is it the bones beginning to take a little bit? Is that a? Well, no, they, they feel good. Like it's just you just never know. You know, it's just 
you know, the, the 30s, you know, people always say about the 30s, when you get in your 30s, you start feeling it a little bit more. I was feeling it when I was covering 11 and a half K as a centre back <laughs> under under Yap, to be honest. But um, yeah, we'll see how pre season goes and just kind of take it one step at a time. You know, get pre season out of the way and and yeah, just just uh, yeah, one day at a time and one game at a time and see see where it takes me. Yeah, I presume the uh, the downtime is a little more quiet for you now. You're not doing the two sessions a day every every weekday for the uh, yeah for the, that was for the summer. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was really stupid. Yeah, ridiculous. You, you wouldn't believe the stuff I was doing. <laughs> uh, we've had a bunch of comments, needless to say, in um, about you, Paul. One from Wayne Ryan here on Facebook. Good morning to you, Wayne. Ask Paul when he retires, will he fancy playing the GA again? New time on Kennedy uh, to wake though in a future Leinster Championship match. No bother to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I'd always, I always thought that when I was younger to, to end up playing Gaelic, but geez, now. No, no, not not in Wicklow. Jeez, you get killed. <laughs> yeah, you get killed up there. Yeah. yeah, that's what they say, don't they? You know that saying in Wicklow. No. No, what's that? You either get a boot in the bollocks or a bollocks in the boot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have another one here from George Seely. I think uh, is Paul still happy at Reading or is he coming home to play GA? I think you probably answered that one. <laughs> the, uh, the hashtag there out to be AM. Was he sponsored uh, New Town Kenny, didn't you? A couple of years ago, he did a Jake Bug on it. Yeah. Name of the shirt. Yeah. Well, the thing was, it was like. I'd yeah, I'd sponsored I sponsored them for the last few years and um it was I was gonna put my dad's name on the shirt. Right. You know, have Sean McShane and then I spoke to my mum and it was a bit raw at the time, like, you know, yeah. that my dad just passed and, and she didn't she didn't want my dad's name to be on there, so it was it was sort of like we didn't really speak about it and then and then it was like what are we gonna do and then it was like I think my brother just said, just put your name on it. So yeah. I put my name on yeah. it. And then when I seen it, it was just Paul McShane straight across. I was thinking, oh, no. I was thinking, how do, we, how do we change this? Like, But yeah, it is. Yeah. So it was just a, a quick decision that was made. And um, yeah, it was good. It was good to sponsor them and, and get behind the, the, the team. Like you said there at the start, your father wanted you to go down the Gaelic Games path. Like, was Joy's the simple reason why you're not playing Gaelic games where you didn't want to play for Wicklow at a senior level or was it kind of a sense of I would have got spotted anyway eventually? No, I, I like growing up in uh, Wicklow where, well, where I was from I always I think it was it was a good thing to play for Joey's it was like mm. if you played for Joey's you were you were decent at football you had a reputation you were, you were good at football and that was sort of my dream was to play for Joey's just to just to have people around the area to, you know say oh yeah he's, he's decent at football but but then when I went to Joey's it, it sort of just um you know, it just took off. Because right. I went as a centre midfielder actually from Newtown to Joey's. But I went to Joey's and uh, it wasn't the same league, Dublin League and the Wicklow League. You know, in Wicklow you could get away with running around like a headless chicken mm. and that's what I was doing. So the the manager at the time, uh, Liam Brown uh, for, for St. Joseph's, um, he said, listen, we have to put a rope on you. So I, <laughs> I went back and played centre back. And um, yeah, it was just, it was, yeah, I played, played really well and they hated it. I hated centre back. Really? Because I wanted to be in the all the action. Mm. And I was like going to my mum and dad, I was like, I'm going back to Newtown. I hate centre back. And then when I was playing I was you know, I was getting a bit of recognition, so I was thinking, Oh well, I might as well I might as well stay centre back and uh, yeah, so that's how I ended up centre back. Jesus. I remember one of my first games actually, um, talking about concussion in the game and stuff and mm. things you've sort of come across when you were younger, um, we played a game under 12s against, I think it was the under 14 B team, and their goalkeeper was booting the ball now, 100, like, 100 feet up in the air every time he had it. And I was heading every single one of them. It was wow. those mitre multiplexes, you oh, know? Oh, yeah. There'd be a bit of weight in that. Yeah, and towards the, the last five minutes, I headed one, and I went cross eyed. <laughs> I, I went cross eyed, and I couldn't get my eyes back, and I was running around in a panic. <laughs> I headed, I headed that many balls, I actually went cross it. <laughs> so, talk about concussion. God knows what will happen to me oh, when I'm wow. older. Bloody but, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that was uh, the start of my centre-back days. Do you, do you feel it on a serious note? Do you feel that sort of... Because uh, it's, it's a pretty hot topic at the minute. Like, there's Lee Keegan, the Mayo footballer, in the back one of the papers today, saying that uh, another concussion he's kind of feeling might end his, uh, his career from a centre-back's point of view. It's yeah. something you're, you're heading quite a bit, obviously. Yeah. Yes. Especially... Being the height I am, I sometimes get, you know catch people's heads and stuff, and it is like it has, um, yeah, it's, it's it's a bit of a worry, all right, Jim. Is it? Yeah. You know, well, well, you see, like you know, Kevin Doyle. I was speaking to Kevin Doyle, and he was saying that every time he headed the ball, he was basically getting a concussion, mm. and um, 
it's probably because of the likes of me head in the back of his head <laughs> but um yeah it is like it's it's a worry but it wouldn't it wouldn't stop me like I sort of say to me missus I say here listen if I end up mad just put me in a home I'll <laughs> yeah. be fine there but uh, yeah I'm just um it's it is like it's it's quite it's dangerous and once the you know it's it's not like a, a crucia or or a knee injury it's, it's your brain so yeah. it's like it's you know it's 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 really it's it's serious stuff um but yeah I think um as as more research is has happened, yeah. It's it is, yeah. It's scary. So it's I'll I'll see how I go. See how I go, and mm. uh, yeah, I could end up in the home soon. Do you think about it when you're playing? No, no, no. Would you cross the white line? You're yeah. It wouldn't cross my mind. Yeah, yeah. So I'd yeah, still be sort of yeah, hell for leather. A uh, few other comments here just before we wrap. Um, Paulo Gorman wonders: Are these Seamus comparisons fair, or just a lazy nod to gingerism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, Seamus. Yeah. I, I got that one year when I went on holidays um, to, I was with the miss, I went to Barbados and a few of them were calling me Seamus, yeah. <laughs> and then who was the new one there? Well, then I was, um, there was, I was getting called something else there. Well, like, well, I, th I was way in America, I was way in Mexico there and I was getting the McGregor one, which I think it was just because of the beard. Right, yeah, yeah. I think it's just the, actually, there, it's funny, I think, um, yeah, Alex Pierce was actually in Barbados the year that I was there and I, I turned up in the morning and he was there for a few days before but all the locals were talking to me as if I was thinking what are they talking about but mm. they were mistaking me and <laughs> Alex Pierce so I think it's just the the colouring thing yeah, that they just yeah. get mixed up in and put us all in the same category Funny you should mention Alex Pierce because that's the one I wanted to wrap on here that I'm sure you're going to comment on uh, from Adrian O'Driscoll on Facebook Good morning to you. Adrian Surely Paul is a better option than Alex Pierce. Jeez <laughs> oh, oh, no, well Alex has been in the squads now for since since Martin first took over yeah. and he's, he's been there I think in every squad ever since so um, so yeah that's yeah yeah yeah, that's yeah, just, that's yeah um, he's a good lad Alex like an home and yeah, he's, um, yeah so we'll, we'll see what happens Paul it's been an absolute pleasure spending some time in your company this morning thanks a million for coming in to yeah. us best of luck with the golf day on Sunday yeah thanks very much thanks a lot. cheers Paul yeah. thank you very thank much you. Uh,